Good morning, Daryl. How are you? Excellent. Thanks, Tony. Uh, we've just had the keynote here at the Slide to Learn uh, conference. Everything's underway and uh, it's going quite well so far. It, it is going well. Um, I enjoyed um, Ivo. Yes. Um, he did sound have a name like a bit of a mad German scientist, but uh, he was doing some interesting stuff with... Um, Mojo. Mojo. Mo mobile journalism. journalism. Yes, and I uh, did a lot of work up with uh, Indigenous people in the Northern Territory, Tony, and uh, quite a few of those locations, you were nodding your head and saying, yep, 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 know that one. It was taking me home, back to my, <laughs> back to my country, to, my, um, to where I grew up. It was very good. No, good to see what they're doing. I got very excited because um, that's something that Lois Smethurst is wanting to, similar kind of stuff at her school. But we'll yeah. talk about that later, though, because we've got a special guest with us here this morning, Daryl. We have. We have Alana. That's well right. He's got the first right. Yeah, that's a first for me. <laughs> he was going through his head. The Hannah Montana has. <laughs> yeah. Alana, I was just getting the rhyme going. <laughs> now, where are you from? I'm from Nelson, top of the South Island of New Zealand. Excellent. And yeah. over the ditch for, the, for a week. And you're just here for the Slide to Learn conference mainly. We did a bit of shopping beforehand. <laughs> Do a bit of visiting afterwards. Yeah. yeah. It was our school holiday, so it's great. Excellent. Um, I, I guess, can, are you able to give us a bit of a picture around your involvement with education and technology and the things that you're doing okay. at the moment? Because you showed us some really interesting um, activities just before we came on air. Okay. Um, well, I'm uh, an e-learning facilitator, or ELF for short, um, and based in Nelson, top half of the South Island. Um, I work four days a week uh, helping principals, lead teacher teams and um, syndicate lead syndicates to um, better use e-learning in their classrooms and one day a week I teach uh, new entrants, year one and year two, um, practice what I preach. Yeah, so that, that's a really interesting setup where you have um, four days with you know co coaching, consulting, uh, helping with leadership and things like that and then you have like a, like a, a hands-on day sort of and thing. You get yeah. credibil credibility yeah. then because... Um, yeah. like because you can, you're yeah, one day a week yeah. you're in the classroom. And I can show examples students. and yeah. I, I've got one iPad and we were one to 120 um, school, so there's one iPad for 120 <laughs> students. Um, so, so a little ways to go before <laughs> yeah. you get to one to one. <laughs> <laughs> and when I go, the iPad goes with me. So um, when I'm out of the school, it's a zero to 120 um, iPad school. Yeah. I train the kids up in the morning to say, hello, Alana, may I use the iPad? If they say, give me the iPad, I say, no, you don't get it. Till the next kid says, hello, Alana, may I use the iPad? Um, so it's great. So I, I, then I blog. So the things I do go up on the blog. So every every yep, so, day. So if you want to give it a plug, um, where would people go to have a um, look? Oh, couple. There's Alana K. Dot edublogs. Dot org. Uh, that's my professional learning blog, and my classroom blog is Motorua, M O T U R O A. Dot blogspot. Dot com. Um, I'd be googling that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you Google yeah. Motorua, yeah. um, you'll get it anyway. Yeah. Uh, Google and you get me. Um, yeah, yeah. Good. And, and just before you were showing us some of the work you were doing with um, students at the, with, with uh, disabilities, could you talk about the way you're using the technology with some of those students or your role in assisting those students? Well I think in a classroom <laughs> the iPad can be great for learning and that, that's great, I mean, we can help kids along, but for, for high need, special needs children to, to be locked inside their bodies that might not function well and be want to communicate, then an iPad is just a stunning tool for being able to communicate. Imagine being locked inside and, and not being able to communicate. So um, I'm working with a dozen or so Nelson mothers who with very high special needs children. Um, they each have an iPad and we have coffee and cake on a, on a Friday night and meet up at a, um, at a restaurant and swap apps and, and practice with because like, you don't know an app unless you actually see it, whether it will suit your child. So um, by having a group of us together, we can um, you know, practice. It's a bit of a learning network and, sh and share. Yeah, and see that actually works um, for, the, for the children. If it might not work now, but it might work soon, which is really good. And also yeah. supporting each other, because if you're a um, mother of a high-needs child, it's, it's hard work. Yeah. And, and <coughs> they get together and we have a, the way we, we communicate is via a secret Facebook page. I didn't know you could do that even. So it's a private? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. A private um, Facebook page so that they can mouth off a bit if they need to with the, some of the state systems that don't actually work for them. They feel they're working against them. So um, it's good and, and uh, works really and well. So, so what would be the typical use case for some of the apps? Is it is it like something where the kids can just broadly 
touch and chew something, or is it you use? From what I saw, you're using more as a sort of a motivator to get. The there are the both of those those things. Um, t um, motivating for wanting to walk. There was the video I showed. I can that's mm. on YouTube. If you want to have a link to it or something. Um, but also to communicate, like you have a tap choice. So you know, you go for watching a DVD and say you want to watch three different DVDs, so the parents could put a picture up with a voice, so the, the child gets to choose. I mean, I mean that's, I think, why some um, autistic kids go off the rails because they can't, they can't communicate what you want, and you know, for somebody else to make those decisions for you must be really hard. If you can make your own decisions, then you, you feel, feel more in control, you know, and yeah. power of your own life, which is a great thing to have. Excellent. Um, your involvement, how long you've been teaching all, all your career? So I've been at school since I was five. <laughs> Without a break for good behaviour. <laughs> and, and always so, in New Zealand? Yeah. 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 And uh, my great, great, great grandma's the first Pākehā girl born in Nelson, so I've been there for a long time. I've been away for a bit too, mind you. But um, yeah, so this is a limited um, government contract which finishes at the end of the, this year. So at the end of this year I go back full time teaching again. So because the money's run out, yep. and Hekia yeah, Parata that, has a new, um, a new, some new goals for us to work towards. So, yep. yeah. So, make, living the dream, making the most of it while we can. Your journey with technology, um, how did that come about? Did, have you always been involved and interested in it, or did you go through a certain aha moment? I did actually. It was with um, Mr. KnowledgeNet. Oh, name escapes me. Sorry, I went, went to a course. It was on learning management systems. I didn't take it in, didn't get what it meant. But the guy um, at half time took a photo of us and he put it on the blog. And I said, oh, how, how, how did you do that? Like, put your photo on the internet, that's really cunning. I thought only boys in America could do that. <laughs> and he said, I, I use Blogger. So I went home and I Googled the word Blogger because I didn't know what it was. And I basically talked to myself to blog. I don't know why, it was just a random act, really. And then through that made the connections with people um, Dorothy Burt was podcasting in Auckland, and so I went out to visit her for the da a day trip. Thought she can do that, I can do that too. And um, to make the, it's the connections, you know, I left comments on their blogs, I left comments yeah. on mine. Like the classroom blogs had what ninety two thousand hits, which is not a bad effort for for a five teacher school in the back end of anywhere really. Um, so those connections are great. I mean, I wouldn't be here today yeah. unless I had shared my practice both with my um, professional blog and with a class blog and the podcast. Yeah. So that technology enabled that sort of personal network to grow and to Indeed. flourish like and I met people to bounce here. off other people. Yeah. And I met people today that um, you know, I hadn't met before via Twitter. I mean, yeah. Well, all that conversations have been primarily Indeed. initially via Indeed. Twitter. Indeed. Yeah. Didn't recognise your avatar, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, well, yes, yeah. 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 I, I don't have a face. I shouldn't change it to a, to a picture sometime, but... Uh, I yeah. did try Googling you before I Oh, did you? But it ah. didn't work. No, sorry. Ah, okay, well, that's all right then. Um, <laughs> now, I'm heading across. Daryl's not coming, um, unfortunately, to you learn. Pass the tissues. Tell us, <laughs> yeah, um, you learn. I was there years ago. I went to a navigator. They used to have the navigator conferences in, in New Zealand. This is going back maybe f seven, eight years ago. Okay, yeah. You learn, Scott. Huge numbers and it a is. really good name. Um, I think it is because it's in the school holidays and it's not because you're sent there, it's because you want to be there. So, like, m because I'm a learning facilitator, I get to go and, and my fees are paid for me. Yeah. But I would have gone anyway. I would have, you know, like, and what other professions would pay your own PD money to mm. get to go there? Because, yeah. because like Nelson, I mean, New Zealand is, is a small place, and and it's the one chance we all get together in the same room. Is, you know, it works out really well. It's really well run. Yeah, you'll, you'll love it. And and all the things that you hear back from people, especially the Aussies that go yeah. over there, and, and even from New Zealanders online, yeah. that it's got a really good feeling mm. and um, yeah, really. And, it, and, it's, and it's a bit like this, it's teacher run. I mean, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah so that's good. Yeah, yeah. We're running a Google Summit beforehand too, so. Go Google. Yes. Yeah. yeah, no, I saw that. That's mm. very good. I'll get to go to that one as well. Excellent. Well, I'm a conference groupie, yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you say fruity or groupie? Groupie. Oh, groupie. Sorry, I thought groupie. you said fruit. I'm thinking, yeah, groupie. I've not heard that term before. <laughs> no. Um, excellent. Well, thank you for joining us thank and sharing you. a little um, bit of your story. Thank you, Australia, for looking after us. No problem. Excellent. I hope you have a wonderful stay here. Thank you. Yeah.